This is the third report within the reports intermediate course. We will work on the sign inspection details report, adding to the report that we built in the beginner course. Here is my sign 0004. Uh, this is a detail uh, view report, so I click reports and I run the report here. It's open in this tab. We're going to add some information to this report, including adding um, attachments and images. I have my report designer open, so we will go ahead and pull that up. Here in the report designer, the first thing we will look at is you will note that the data does not line up with the labels we created here in the preview. Ashworth Road should be one line down and D3-1 should be a few lines down. Uh, there are gaps in the data here, so we will um, put some formatting in to, when there, to say that when there are gaps in the data to um, put a blank space. So I'm going to start by double clicking here to pull open my properties window, excuse me, right here. And I'm going to double click on the signs address number line and we'll do um, an if statement um, to make sure that it allows for blank space even if there is no data. So we will start by saying if is null or empty. So we're using a few different functions here. So if the signs address number is null or empty, we will tell it to do something. I The signs address number is a number, so I'm going to convert that to a string here. Anytime you use string, uh, excuse me, if statements, you do need to convert your fields to numbers. Or, you, excuse me, convert the number fields to strings. And then I'm going to use my character function and put 160. That will allow a blank space for me. And I'm going to say to string sign, oops, signs address number. And so what, how this reads is if the signs address number, which we converted to a string, if it is null, put a blank space in, and then I say else, so this third here option here is what do I do if it um, is not empty? So uh, this third option is actually um, an optional thing here. Um, I could take it off and get the same results, but I'm going to go ahead and use that else um, part of my if statement. Now I'm going to go ahead and copy this if statement, which we will apply to um, all the lines of our paragraph properties. And to save myself some typing time, I will just copy and paste and change those field names. So I'm going to do the same thing on street here. Just paste it in here. And now all I actually have to um, do here is change the field types or the field names. I also can remove the two string um, for these guys because the streets signs street field is actually already a string, uh, which means it's text. So I'm going to go ahead and take those out of there just so you see what that looks like without that. Um, so there's two different ways to do it using those two string and of course not using the two string. Of course, this one's much easier to read. I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, let's copy this one. And I'm going to do the same thing on city. So I believe that most of my fields should be strings already, so I don't need that two string on all of them. Again, just copying and pasting. The principle is the same. Um, I'm just going to change those field names that are important to me. All right, so let's go ahead and see what that does for us. Now you see we've got some gaps here in our data, um, so that looks wonderful. We will do the same thing here on uh, this other set of data. I'm going to double click, and because these are all dates, I will need that two string function again, so we'll throw those back on there. So I put my two string back in there and now I'm just changing the fields 
Um, the date fields are their own. Um, let's see. They may have a, a little bit of off parentheses here. Let's see. Let's try this brand new here. Date fields are uh, specifically date um, types. They're not strings or tech strings or numbers. So we do have to convert those as well. So this is the signs entry date field. And I'm going to do comma and that's, this is my, what do we do if it's empty? Again, I'm just putting that blank space in here and then I'm doing my else here. So two string signs entry date and close the parentheses. Syntax error. Hmm. All right, let's cancel out of here. We'll go ahead and copy this and just see if I can't Okay, there we go. Got a good one here. So we will go ahead and just copy and paste these in. Again, just changing those fields. So this is especially useful um, in, in all different types of reports that you're, that you're using. Um, but here we are uh, definitely, you know, installed, replaced, and retired dates we have on this report. Um, we, you know, we, we are likely not to see the retired date populated, so we definitely want to leave uh, that space blank rather than have uh, the act before date move up and uh, confuse our data. So I'm going to just put these on here as well. Now you'll notice that the only one here on data one that I did not do this on is the signs ID. That is an absolutely required field. You will never have a sign that doesn't have an ID. So I did not put that guy there. Now we'll go ahead and save this report and uh, take a look and see what it looks like here. All right, so I will refresh the report in the viewer. And uh, we see we have where we uh, did not have a space here, we do now have a space for that retire date. Okay, we will come back into the designer here. All right, so the next thing we'll want, we're gonna do to this report is actually put a sign avatar on here. I wanna see what this sign should look like based on its MUTCD code. I'm gonna actually put that right up here in this top right corner. So I'll make room by moving my um, title over just a little bit. Now the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna go ahead and say um, insert and I'm going to do picture and draw it in here, just like drawn in the text box. I'm gonna go ahead and choose formula at this time because I have the sign avatar related to an MUTCD code and not just a file on my desktop. Um, I want to use formula so I can pull that field out. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do signs Let's see, let's open my variables and we'll just search for this here, just so that I get it exactly correct. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and insert this guy here. So how I got to that was I did signs under variables, signs, and sign MUTCD codes, because the avatar is related to the MUTCD code library, and I chose avatar. Now you see this error in return type. It says expected picture is string. The reason for that is this actually, um, if I hit okay and I, um, wanted to see it, it would show up as an HTTPS URL. I need to convert it to a picture, so I'm going to use the drawing function. And it's just drawing with inside parentheses. And now you'll see the output here is a URL, but if I hit OK, uh, we actually get a picture there. So I'll go ahead and save that, and we will take a peek at what this looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and We'll, we should expect to see something along this line. We can scroll down. We should expect to see this to make sure that our report's correct. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh 
to pull up the refresh report. And we do in fact see that avatar, so that's great. Okay, the next thing I wanna do to this report is I wanna put a little bit of, uh, I wanna put some more information up here. I'm gonna put a text box here that tells me the estimated OCI. So anytime I run this report, whether the estimated OCI is at zero or 100, it will always match the estimated OCI that is right here. So right now we're at 36, 0.01. If I replace this sign, I would expect to see a, lot, a higher estimated OCI, and when I reran the report, that would change as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've got the blank space in here already, So, and I'm already on my Insert tab. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Text, and I'm going to go ahead and just drag a text box in here. And what I'm looking for here is to say Estimated OCI and this is text, so I'm going to put it inside those quote, quotation marks. And then I'm going to say plus, I'm going to concatenate a sentence together using a field, two string signs.estimated OCI. And I'm going to just choose that. So the output should look like this, estimated OCI, colon, space, and then the number. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put that there. It's a little small, so I'll use my text options here and say center, and let's do up a little bit, and let's go underline on this. So we've added that in there as well, and we will go ahead and save. Before we go back and preview the report, because I'm sure we'll know what that will look like, let's actually add a list of attachments to this report. So we've got our inspections table here. It doesn't take up the whole report, so I'm gonna go ahead and smush it down and make some room for those attachments. The way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to um, insert an attachments table. And I'm going to say insert, and we're going to go report container and draw it in underneath here. I'm going to go ahead and choose table, and I want signs attachments as my um, source table. I'm going to go ahead and say OK there. And here I just want a really simple table. I'm going to choose ID notes and attachment. Double click and I can get them over there. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK. So you see, I'm actually gonna move these columns around here, but this is an important thing I wanna highlight. You see this is a URL. That's not helpful at all, because then I'd have to take it out of the report and put it in my browser to see what it looks like. So I'm actually gonna double click on this field and I'm gonna use that drawing function again. So I'm gonna double click on here one more time to open up my edit table and I'm gonna do drawing. So it'll say the output is still a URL, but we should now see a little tiny image. I have to give it some more room. So on this field, or on this line definition, I'm actually gonna go ahead and, oh, maybe on the field, rather. I'm gonna select the field and scroll all the way down, and I'm gonna give the height, let's give it an inch and a half. So that way, each attachment we give a good amount of space for. I'm gonna go ahead and pop over to the footer line and just take out that footer. And I'm gonna go ahead and pop over to this header line and I'm on line definition one. I'm gonna go ahead and do um, empty line definition here to insert a new one. I'll use my arrow to move it up. I'm gonna hit the piece of paper to insert a new um, column and I just want this to say attachment data, or attachments, excuse me. We will go ahead and, so I've got those in here. I'm gonna go ahead and open that font window. And let's set this to bold and 14, and say okay and okay. So now it uh, sort of matches what we have here for the inspection data. I'm gonna double click on this attachments guy and take out the background color because it looks like my other um, my other field did not have a background color. And I'm gonna uh, click and drag to stretch this out. And it actually looks like it doesn't have frames either for this label, so let's go ahead and take the frame off that guy as well. Just to get the formatting to match a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and save. Now in the previewer, we only see the one attachment or in the uh, report designer, excuse me. And But if I come back in here and I actually refresh my report, um, we will see that there are multiple, uh, or I believe there are multiple attachments for this. Nope, there's just the one. Uh, any 
Um, other sign that we had, um, let's pull one of those up that has multiple attachments. And I'll be able to filter by that by adding a signs layer. I'm going to go ahead and select a filter and I'm going to say attachments ID. We'll say ID is not null. So this, they have at least one attachment. We can also do, let's see, and I need it to be, oh, I've got pavement layers on here too, don't I? Let's try for 11 and see what we've got for those. They may all just have one photo on them. Yep, but if I had more than one attachment here, we would see multiple lines.